Hey eBay sellers, it's Suzanne back with another Money Making Monday video. I know this is y'all's favorite because you have told me. And what we do here is I have a Facebook group called Stay at Home Moms Selling on eBay. Anybody can join. Um, it's just we started this group back in 2008 and we cannot change the name. So what we do every Monday is Shaney will start the thread and sellers post what they found, how much they paid for it, how much they sold it for, if they can remember how long it took to sell, and a link to the item so you can go look at it and see all the details. Was it free shipping? Was it um, fixed price, best offer, you know, auction? What was it? So, but one thing I want to go over before we get into today's video is a lot of times y'all will yes I'm talking like a southern person saying y'all a lot of times you will email me or comment that you have the same items and why aren't they selling for as much and there's a lot of reasons for this um, so what I want to do is point you towards my premium content library uh, there's a link to that below the video and I have a like a mini course in there that's explaining this why your eBay item sells less than the competition and this is about 30 minutes long but I'm doing case studies in here so I'll take two items that sold within just a few days of each other for very different prices and dissect why one sold for more than the other so it's really important to be a detective and look at a lot of different factors on eBay and you may not know how to do that so that's one reason I've started this premium content library is to put my coaching materials and these very in-depth videos about exactly how to do eBay and make more money um, you may not know this but I have been coaching eBay clients over the phone and on Skype since 2009 and I have so much material to share with you it's just um, it's overwhelming for me to even start putting it together so that's why I have this premium content library is to put this very in-depth teaching material there to help you be a better seller so if you're serious about your business and you want to know why your item is not selling for as much as the competition I have that answer for you um, also, when you click the link below, it's going to take you to PayPal to pay your first month's uh, subscription of $20. So you can cancel anytime you want. It's no big deal. But I really encourage you to go check this out because a lot of your answers are going to be there. And it's not just what's in there now. It's what I'm constantly adding. Um, for example, I'm working on a course about consumables right now. And what a lot of you don't realize is consumables are in every single category on eBay. It's not just food or makeup. It's all kinds of things. And when you sell consumables, you are creating a repeat business situation. Um, you don't have to sell the same exact thing over and over again. But the key is you want to sell things that get used up because those people are coming back to eBay habitually to buy more of whatever it is um, like we as eBay sellers we go on eBay and we buy labels and mailers and printer ink and all the stuff we need well when you tap into that mentality and you're looking for those kinds of things all the time you get that um, repeat buying situation that you may not get with collectibles or clothing so it's all about diversity anyway um, just wanted to mention that there's a lot of good material going into this premium educational content subscription I'm doing um, and it is very high quality stuff that nobody else is teaching so go check that out now back to money making Monday so let's start going through these um, Teresa I'm going to call out your sale here she bought this Corning vision wear pot for three dollars at Goodwill listed on May 1st and sold on May 8th for $24.95 plus shipping 
I pass these up all the time. Um, we got a set of these when I got married in 1988. That was kind of the thing was this clear uh, Corning vision wear. It's, it's like, um, it's glass, but it's, you know, it's for cooking so it can withstand high heat and it's, it's thick. Um, now this probably would be pretty expensive to ship, but she's done, let me in, increase the size of the screen here. Um, she's done probably calculated shipping, so the buyer paid that price. Um, it's showing $18.90 for me because I'm in Georgia and she's in Maine, so it may have gone to someone close to her that didn't pay as much. But um, this is a good pick because it looks vintage, but apparently people still want it. And here's another one Teresa's got, bought at Goodwill for $5, listed on May 7th for $29.95, sold on May 12th for best offer of $25 plus shipping. And it's an L.L. Bean item. Again, she's up there in Maine, so maybe she's seeing more of this than other people because that's where their flagship store is up there in Maine. And this is a vintage flannel nightgown. And she's got the um, the tag there. Doesn't matter if it's written on. You know, vintage things are going to not be perfect. They're going to have writing. They're going to have cracks. They're going to have stains. They're going to have issues. And that's okay. I mean, they've lived a long time and things are going to happen. So don't worry about that. Um, so she listed both of these items and they sold within a week. Um, so that is why you need to get these items listed. That's your daily encouragement. Um, somebody put a comment on one of my videos last week about, um, you don't have to keep telling us to list our items. We know that. <laughs> well, I feel like you guys need encouragement. And, it, you know, it's, it's somebody out there saying, hey, get back to it. Because if you don't list it, it can't sell. Um, some of my viewers need that encouragement to do their work and um, I'm sorry if some of you find that offensive that I keep saying that but that is the number one thing that is the um, stumbling block between successful sellers and not is getting your stuff listed if you've got a backlog of 400 items that's just a huge pile of money right there so that's what this thread is all about is getting you uh, motivated and inspired to get busy and list your stuff because most people don't like that job. They like shopping. Uh, some people like taking the pictures. Some people just like, you know, shipping. But listing is kind of a job, a task that a lot of people don't like. So that's what this video is about is to inspire you to get your things listed so you can see these sales. Okay, moving on. Richard Mason bought uh, this for $2, sold at full price of $39 plus shipping in 60 days. And it's some women's Reebok shoes. And see, that's not a brand I would actually, you know, pick because I didn't know they sold for so much. So it's, they're called Smooth Fit. Looks like a specialty walking shoe, maybe. Um, athletic shoe size nine and a half and he's got uh, oh he's right up the road from me in Talking Rock Georgia well, how about that so plenty of plenty of Goodwill stores to go around here in in the Atlanta metro area I tell you I could never get to them all um, so that is a great sale two dollars and sold for 39 and then we've got Chrissy Matthews here bought this at a yard sale for a dollar listed last March I guess she's meaning of 2018 and sold for $19.95 plus shipping. I see this false graph all the time. My mom had this one and actually we had two. We had the the brown set at one point like with the, the brown uh, design here and then a few years later she switched over to the the blue. So it's the stoneware folk art. This is a water pitcher and uh, that's really cute. This type of stuff, I look for the um, the pieces like the salt and pepper, the butter dish, the gravy boat, things that aren't just the plates and the cups because they're they're more highly sought after. So she got this for a dollar and it sold for 20 bucks. So good sale there. And then we've got Maddie. He listed this uh, 
touch tone phone he got it for free and he sold it for $10.99 on best offer and it went to the UK so a couple things I want to comment here about is um, dead tech is not dead some people like these kind of phones and or they're collectible or they're just fun you know that's this is the kind of phone I remember using <clears throat> excuse me and it went to the UK so he is selling internationally and he got a sale because of that so they paid however much shipping it was um, to get this sort of heavy item to the UK and Jen Van Cleve says I miss hanging up on people when I get mad <laughs> I know because what can you do with a smartphone all you could do is like throw it across the room pressing the end button just isn't the same yeah I totally get that <laughs> okay so let's move on down here and see what else we've got okay here's an interesting one Jerry his father-in-law who used to be a pilot and flight instructor gave him some of the instruments from his old Cessna this was the last one that had not sold it had been about eight months it finally sold for seventeen fifty nine so a free item a very funky specialty item and this is a uh, a compass that is a part of uh, an airplane instrument you know on the panel so that's a cool thing somebody just wanted that for whatever reason so you never know don't throw things away because you never know what people want all right let's move down here and see what else we can find here's an interesting one Tina bought this self-fetching toy for her dog paid five dollars at Goodwill her dog only played with it if I played with her <laughs> so it's kind of the point of the the toy is the dog doesn't need you um, sold it on $25 for best offer and this is the iFetch I remember when this came out that was pretty cool uh, there was a lot of videos on YouTube about this but it's a automatic ball throwing toy and I think you train the dog to bring it back and drop it in the top so it will spit it back out again um, I'm not sure though because I never had a dog that would do anything I wanted it to it didn't learn tricks like that it pretty much trained me to give it treats all the time um, so she took a $25 offer on that item okay and then this is Tina again these were mine I found a nicer set at the thrift store for a couple of bucks so I sold these and they are a lot of the rattan or wicker paper plate holders not a huge sale but this is that kind of stuff that's in your house that you can sell that you don't realize you can sell especially if you're new because um, people seem to think I can only sell collectibles or high dollar clothing or um, you know expensive things but if you go through the average American household has 300,000 items that was on I think Forbes.com last year and at least seven thousand dollars in worth of stuff that can be sold online and this is where the money is in, in all these little sales all this junk that adds up so if you think about it most houses have three hundred thousand items in them I mean that's counting every single thing pens and pencils and silverware and um, you, you know all the little stuff but it's all stuff you can sell so just open your mind to that okay Dana bought a huge box of hotel soaps parted them out thought they'd sit forever these 15 sold within nine dollars for nine dollars within about a week so here's another thing and a lot of people have these saved up um, my ex father-in-law traveled a lot and he always brought back motel soaps they had bags and bags of this in their house and probably still do my daughter will probably be end up selling all this stuff one day um, because they're in their 80s and you know they just they just keep everything and you just don't know what's gonna sell somebody may be wanting this for collectible reasons or maybe they just like that soap or they think it's fun or um, you know a lot of people are going more towards 
being eco friendly and just using stuff that's already there and not buying from Walmart or the dollar store, wherever grocery store, they're, they're just buying old stuff like this to use. So if you were one of those traveling people that stockpiled travel um, hotel shampoos and lotions and conditioners and soaps and all that, try lotting that up and selling it. You just never know. Okay. Let's see what Janine has. Her husband found these at Goodwill for $3 each. Took about a month to sell for $79.97 plus shipping. The same buyer bought both of them. So let's see what they are. They are um, blank DVDs it looks like. Uh, sorry, blank CD-ROM. So blank CDs that you can record on. And these were $3 and... They sold for $79.97. So this right here would be a consumable because it's something that gets used up. So if you're not looking in all these different sections, that's the kind of stuff you're missing because somebody obviously needed these for something. Maybe they ran out and they needed more, so they went on eBay to get them. Okay, let's see what else we've got. Here's Janine again. Her nephew is always asking her to find him a kugi sweater. I'm always looking for one to sell. This was her first. Didn't realize the name Soul of Australia was a kugi until I saw it on the back of the tag. On and on. Okay, she paid $39, sorry, $3.99 at Goodwill. Sold for best offer of $38. Um, three days later. So let's take a look at that. Yes, that is, has a definite unique look to it. If you look at the texture, it has sort of an open weave kind of look to it. This would be very easy to spot on the rack at a thrift store because the texture is so unusual. And she had it up for sale for $59.97 and she took a best offer of $38. So there you go great sell. <clears throat> okay. Oh, here's something that someone got free. Amy got these for free and sold for $55. <laughs> Can't beat that. Coach shoes. They're ballet flats that are uh, like stretchy. They're new without box. So I guess a friend or family member gave them to her because she said she got them for free. And yep, they're brand new. So those went for 55 bucks. So if you get it listed, it will sell. Okay, Lisa bought a bag of nine boxes of film for $8 at a garage sale. So paid approximately 89 cents a piece. Sold the first two in a lot for $39.99 with free shipping. And she says, again, don't overlook old media items. Yes, this stuff sells. People either are still using the media, like the um, the movie film or whatever, or they have a collection of it. So I wish we had saved all of our old media. I used to have Kodak camera with flash bulbs and um, you know all that funky stuff. I had a camera that was called the Disc uh, Kodak Disc camera, and that had some very uh, funky film thing that you put in there. It was a disc and um, all that stuff's collectible now. So if you see that at garage sales or estate sales, check it out. Okay, let's move down here a little bit and see what else we've got here. Trying to find some unusual stuff. Um, oh, there's George Kelly. He's always got something. Okay, he's got a camera he bought at an estate sale yesterday for five dollars sold within an hour for sixty five dollars so there you go again on get it listed because someone may have an alert and be looking for that very item that you just found so there's George Kelly's listing sixty five dollars and was new in the box so there you go Lots of electronics this week. 
Okay, here's a pair of shoes, Cass Goulding, bought at a local thrift store for $3 on Friday, listed at 7.30 last night, which would be a Monday night, I guess. Took an offer of, no, that would be a Sunday night. So basically sold it over the weekend. And how much did they pay? $3. Oops. And they went for $34.99. And they are Brooks Women's Transcend Guide Rail Blue Purple Running Shoes. So let's see. That's It says right there on the side, Guide Rails. So that's your visual cue. And looks like somebody wore these for a while because they're not brand new. But that's okay. Some people don't care. Um, especially if they are going to be wearing them outside, going hiking, you know, running on trails in the woods, whatever. Um, they may not want to spend 150 bucks on a brand new pair of shoes. Um, there is some criticism out there of used shoes selling, like um, you should never buy used shoes because they have been formed to fit another person's foot and, you know, on and on, stuff like that. So my feeling is, who cares? Um, <laughs> you know, it's for millions of years, human beings didn't even wear shoes at all, and our feet are just fine. So um, there's huge money to be made in selling pre-owned shoes just because some people do not want to pay the full price, or they may be, um, they may be in a situation where they're going to get torn up, beat up anyway, and they don't they don't want to invest that kind of money in it. So, as you can see, a lot of used shoes get sold and are posted on this group, so I don't worry about it. All right, Luann bought at a yard sale for $5, sold in a week for $31.99 plus $7.99 shipping. And these are some Uggs. Oh, those are cute. They're little flat um flat loafer slip-ons with the rhinestone bows those are really cute so are these slippers they look like slippers well i guess she just said they're flats but they look like slippers but i guess ugg is lined with the um the sheep's wool like that so it could be either one so she sold those for $31.99 and she bought them at a yard sale and they are in gently worn condition which is they look almost brand new. Okay let's see what else we've got Sue bought this new batting for $2.24 sold it in nine days for $19. This is great it's craft supplies don't overlook that. Um, you'll see a lot of these at estate sales I've noticed because um, this is just my assumption because I have a mother who's a crafter and it's like when they get to retirement age some people just buy a lot of supplies that just there's just no way they can do all these projects um, and I shouldn't say it's just retired people because I was doing that in my 20s <laughs> I bought like all this cross stitch stuff and all these crafts I was gonna make and I subscribed to the Martha Stewart magazines with all the craft stuff and you know I I completely overestimated what I was able to do so other people do that too and craft supplies are usually pretty lightweight to sell to ship and um, they're good you know people are looking for them so don't overlook that at your garage sales and estate sales okay let's see what else we can find lots of shoes this week okay this is um, Marlene Myers Kimball bought for five dollars at a small town church thrift shop sold within a week for $59.99 so she bought this for five dollars and sold it for sixty and it is a breast pump kit. These do really well on eBay just because they're so expensive to start with. Um, so, you know, I think women do better selling these because we just are like, oh, that's a thing another woman can use. You know, men might not be really excited to pick this up and list it because they're like, don't really, can't relate to it. <laughs> Um, but this has all of the uh, instructions and like the 
extras that come with it so extra tubing it looks like and it's been cleaned and sterilized according to eBay policy which is very important but as you can see people will buy these used because they're very expensive new so that was a great find and yay for you for not being embarrassed to list it on eBay Marlene okay um, let's see what else Oh, here's my wonderful daughter. Two dollars at, I know exactly where she got this. I think it was the little church thrift store we go to. And it sold for full price of $29.99. And it's just your basic Chico's Travelers top. And I think it went international. I think it went to Canada or Australia or something like that. But just a cool looking Chico's top. So for those of you that think Chico's doesn't sell, yes it does. Um, <laughs> and I've got some information on uh, Chico's course coming up. So that's in my, in my vault of things to do because I've been asked several times to do a course on that explaining all the different lines of Chico's, which things sell better than others, which ones should you avoid, all that kind of stuff. Okay, so let's see what else we've got. Um, try to find some higher dollar ones here. Lots of good consistent sales. Here's Janae. She paid $16 at a thrift store, sold in a month for $120 plus shipping. And let's see what this is. Oh, it's some headphones. Now Janae lives in kind of a small town because I've talked with her and she just has this figured out. She just knows where to go and when to go, what days to go, uh, what kind of things to look for. She sells all kind of different things and she makes it work. So you just have to be aggressive and work this business and figure it out because I live in a small town. I get it, you know, some of you just don't have access to a lot of stuff, but if you're aggressive enough you can figure out a way okay let's see who else we've got oh here's a good brand Diana Duhon paid $5.99 at Goodwill for this Maeve anthropology dress that is a, a brand I also look for and have sold and that's just a cute multicolored kind of geometric looking summer dress and she's got the tag there that is a sub-brand of anthropology called Maeve. So good for you, Diana. Okay. Oh, <laughs> Diana. Paid a dollar at Goodwill on sale day. Had my VA, Melanie Wells, list it and sold for full asking price of $29.99 and shipping after five months. So some, some things just take time. Just hang in there with it price it right and wait but this is a nice tennis skirt it's got the tag on it here we are in May and you know getting into summer months where people are getting out there and playing tennis so sometimes you just have to hang on to things and be patient all right let's do a couple more then I'll wrap this up speaking of wrap let's go to Melissa wrap <laughs> Some of you may remember a post I did on this one asking how to clean her up. Thanks for the tips she sold. She bought this for 65 cents at a thrift store and sold in a little over a month for $48. And this is a doll. And I do remember, Melissa, you posting that on the group um, because she looked kind of rough. But I think the situation was Melissa bought a whole bunch a box of them or it was a bunch of them I think and they they all needed some tender loving care and she did that so 65 cents and she sold for $48 so that's that's what eBay is about um, let's see what else we've got here Julie Brown Brownfield um, hey Julie Brownfield I recognize you <laughs> Paid $8 at Goodwill, took a best offer of $100, took about 15 days to sell. So we'll probably see this one again on the $100 thread. 
um, but I just was attracted to this because the picture they're so funky looking vintage women's shoes mules white floral appliques like there's it's not even about the brand here it's about what they look like and they're by Selby which um, th that's still a brand I think but they're just some funky looking looks like um, something Goldie Hawn would have worn and laugh in <laughs> just funky 60s flower power shoes and what a sale oops let me get rid of these um, took 15 days to sell paid eight dollars that's that was worth the investment so again for some of you that are like I can't pay more than three dollars for something you have to look at the potential profit you can't make those kind of rules based on um, you know your your bottom dollar price on things how much are you going to make could you make when you sell it and I just don't even like to deal in percentages because I, I get a lot of emails like um, well I don't have best offer so should I raise everything by this percent and if I take an offer I should only take an offer if it's this percent of the asking price no just can you make money on it is it worth your time to do it is it worth the investment in the item how long have you had it how much do you want to get rid of it what do you think you can get for it what does your experience tell you so a lot of you are creating these rules for yourself that are just hindering your process your uh, progress because you're trying to make this into a cut and dry process and it's not it's it's something you just have to get a feel for and I don't know how to explain it any better than that I see a lot of people on YouTube trying to do all this percentage stuff and your sell through rate should be this and you should be selling this percentage of stuff a, a day and um, it, it's just different for everybody you just can't make up a formula for this it's impossible um, as someone that's been doing this since 2003 every single day it's just something that you get a feel for and if you try to do it by the numbers too much you're you're missing opportunities now I'm a big numbers person you do need to keep track of everything but um, like with these shoes these are very unusual and they're vintage and they're leather and you know all the other things they have going for them so I would have waited for this price but if it's something I've had for a year that I got for a dollar and I'm only gonna sell it for 20 and I get a best offer of 15 I'm taking it because you gotta keep your stuff moving okay let me pick one other thing here um, this is oh cool Sandra paid five dollars at an estate sale listed less than an hour and sold for sixty five dollars shipped and it is a vintage it looks vintage Maybe. oh yeah it is it's a red leather weighted medicine ball this looks like something they would have used on in gym class on leave it to beaver or something <laughs> it looks pretty old um, and it's stitched up with leather so I, I wouldn't even doubt that this was bought as some kind of collectible for a display maybe in a high school gym or a private school gym or maybe a private boxing gym something like that where it's just probably on display just because it looks cool so that's a great find it's five dollars at an estate sale sold for sixty five dollars shipped okay now let me pick one more here I'm not gonna pick all the hundred dollar ones because those are gonna be showing up in the hundred dollar video which I will be doing shortly okay Here's something funky. Tim Hunt. His wife picked this foot brace up on a recent thrifting adventure for $4. It sold for $20 plus shipping to someone in Switzerland. Okay, that's a pretty easy flip. I like this because it is lightweight, easy to ship, something anyone can use anywhere in the world. Um, definitely, a plantar fasciitis is very painful. I've had it, and um, this definitely would would help in the morning with that pain that you get when you step out of bed because your when your foot relaxes at night and flops forward that's when the um, the plantar fasciitis fascia um, knots up 
and it shortens and then when you get out of bed to try to walk it's just a killer so that's what this is for um, but yeah lightweight easy to ship and it went to Switzerland where someone has that same problem and look here we are in the United States helping people feel better all over the world <laughs> so okay guys I'm gonna wrap this up here and love your comments on these and please check out my premium content library the uh, link is below come join for a month see what we're doing in there and the value of this is really what I continue to add not what's in there right this second because I'm constantly adding new things lots of series lots of things with multiple parts many courses that you can learn from on an ongoing basis thanks so much for watching and have a profitable and productive day on eBay bye